Autogen brings updates every week, and in some weeks, there are multiple. This week, there are a couple interesting ones, including bringing .NET to Autogen and saving and executing front-end code. Okay, so with the latest version, it brings new language support for .NET. They can now support OpenAI Assistant version 2 API, which I think is in beta right now. So you can also use version one, but they allow for version two as well. There are a couple of new features allowing initialization of an agent with message history and event logging. They also allow you to re-query a speaker name when multiple speaker names are returned during the group chat. This is a really interesting one, which is the new language support and code execution for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And there's a new caching backend using Azure Cosmos DB. And I believe this is a NoSQL database. I'm gonna show you how to set up a .NET project, which by all means, I am not a .NET developer. Although I have used C Sharp before when I was developing for Unity quite a few years ago. So after doing some research, here is how I set up my project with Autogen using .NET. Well, the first thing is you need an IDE that can support the C Sharp language for .NET. And if you're on Windows, you can download Visual Studio 2022. There's a free download for the Community Edition. You can go ahead and use that. Or if you're not a Windows or you just rather prefer to use this, you can download Visual Studio Code. This is the one that I'm going to be using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download this. If you download and use Visual Studio Code, once you have it running on the extension tab here, go ahead and install the C-sharp dev kit. And while that's installing, the next thing you need is the .NET SDK. So I will have this link in the description, but it's just .NET.Microsoft.com. You go to the download section and then download the SDK. Then just go through the installer. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and start creating our first .NET project with Autogen. Okay, so you do have to shut down Visual Studio Code completely, reopen it, and then the SDK will appear or it will say that it can recognize it. Then you can go ahead and create a .NET project. And then you get come up with the several different options. And to be honest with you, I don't really know all of these options. So I just went and created an empty one. And then for the name, I'm just gonna call it Autogen. .NET. Okay, great. So at the top left here, it created a sample project for us. So it gives us a sample .cs project file and a C sharp file as well. And this is, and this program .cs is the file that we're going to modify for Autogen. Okay, so we have a sample project file for Autogen.net. And the first thing we need to do here is I have this, I'll try to put this link in the description, but we need to add the package for Autogen. So go ahead and just copy this. We want to come back to Visual Studio Code. Now you have to actually go into the project, right? So if uh, if you list what we currently have in the path, you need to CD into autogen.net or whatever your project name is. Okay. So now that I'm in here where I'm in all of my files, it has to, you can't, you can only add the package once it can see our project. So then I'm going to copy paste.net add package autogen hit enter and it's going to install everything. I kind of already did this, but um, so it'll be more for you, but it only takes a couple seconds. Now with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all of this code. Here in this line, you could set an environment variable. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hard code the string here um, because I'm not worried about doing all that. I just wanna show you that it actually works. Okay, so now all we need to do is run it, is open up your terminal and type in the command .net run. Okay, and we started. So we can just start chatting with our AI agent. So if I just ask you what the longest river in Europe is, it says the longest river in Europe is the Volga River, if I even pronounce that right. And I don't know what that is, but I also don't know a lot. Okay, and we can just chat with our agent. If you're a .NET developer, well, good news, you can now start using Autogen. So very briefly, I just wanted to go over that they do support Assistance API uh, version 2 for OpenAI. So if we go to their latest release change, in their OpenAI Utilities Python file, um, in the Create GPT Assistant, you can see if the GPT Assistant API version is v2, then there are more more options for the tools and you know file IDs. If file search is the tool that you want to use, um, and then they return the client.v.assistance.create, and these are the arguments. And the last thing that I'm going to go over is they said they have support for code execution with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript only using the local command line code executor. Well, to be honest, I couldn't get to actually execute code and I'll show you why I don't think it actually executed, but I did get it to save. And before it didn't know or understand the language HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, but now it does and it recognizes it and you can actually save two files. Okay, so for the coding, um, in my AI uh, projects, I'll have a new directory for Autogen update 0.2.27. Um, I'll only have, well, I guess I'll try to somehow put the .NET code in here as well. So you can at least just copy and paste it. But as you can see here, whenever I ran uh, my main.python file, it did save 
um, files into HTML, uh, JavaScript, and CSS, which is cool. So here's the changes that you need to make that happen. Now, again, it only works for local command line executors, right? That means it can only work on your machine's local command line. So this is the first thing you need to import. And then typically, so we just have a, an assistant agent and then a user proxy agent. So typically for the code execution, instead of this, right, just pretend that's not here, uh, you would typically have work underscore directory, and then you could give it coding, and then you might say use Docker false, and then we're good. You know, or you can set this to true if you're using Docker, but you no longer need, well, you can still do that, but to make this work, you can't do that. <laughs> you have to actually set this to use a local command line executor. So, you know, here we instantiated and execute. This is an uh, instantiated object of the local command line executor. And all you need here, you don't even re really need this timeout, but uh, I don't think you need it, but I put it there. Um, and then for the working directory, you give it the code. Okay, that's kind of the same that we, uh, what I just showed you, but just now it's in this object. And you see, we don't need to say use Docker is false because it knows that we're trying to run this on our local command line. And everything else um, is pretty much just, I haven't did, I mean, everything else is uh, similar. You know, I have the openai config list.json, you know, have that over here. Everything else isn't too different from what you've done with Autogen uh, already, right? But you need to do this if you want to save HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. So for my message, I just said create a simple HTML uh, homepage, stylize it with some CSS, create a button that one click displays hello using JavaScript. And something that I think you need to have is to make sure to comment out the file names at the top of each file. Because, you know, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, uh, it, whenever it tries to save the file name, so in order to actually save it, right, it needs to give the file name um, at the top of the code that it generates. But each of these different languages um, use comments differently. So you have to tell it to make sure, like, to do this so that it actually comments it out or, you know, the JavaScript won't run, right? So if I come over, open up my script.js, you know, you come out with double slashes, but if I just did uh, hashtag like we've been doing with Python, then this isn't going to work, right? So you have to have the double, uh, you have to say that so it knows how to do this properly. So if we run this, okay, so we ran it with uh, the message. Um, so the first thing is we have triple triple tick marks for HTML. See, it commented out, uh, it didn't have the hashtag here because that, that wouldn't work. We need, we need to comment this properly, but this will, still allows it to save it to our working directory. So it did the same thing for our CSS, and then finally did the same thing for JavaScript. Now if, we, now, if we, now if we scroll down a little bit more, you can see it tried, you know, says, it's saying that the user is executing three code blocks, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It did not fail, but it didn't actually, you know, it didn't execute the HTML file or didn't start it up um, and come up in my browser, right? It didn't do anything. And I'll show you why in just a minute why I believe that didn't happen. Uh, but it did save all three files to the code directory for home.html, style, and script.js, okay? And then it finished. So let's just, I can show you real quick how to run this in PyCharm. So if you open up or double click the home.html, you know, this is the HTML file it created. On the top right here, it gives you a list of a few browsers. I'm just gonna choose Chrome. So if I click on Chrome, it's gonna open this up in Chrome. And then this is obviously super ugly, but if I uh, click on the click, me button, it brings up the alert for hello, which is done through JavaScript. Now, you know, this is, I just did this simple, um, I just did this very simple project just to show you that it can work, all right? But now we can actually have it run and save front end files for us. Now, back to why I believe it did not actually execute instead of just saving the files like it says that it would do on the release. So if we, you know, there were changes done in this local command line code executor class, if we come into here, Right, it updated the support languages and default execution policy. So you see, we added JavaScript, HTML, and CSS for both of these. Where uh, on the default execution policy dictionary, we have JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. They are set to the Boolean false instead of true, like all the others. Okay, that's strange. But what does that mean? Well, if we scroll down a little bit here, okay, we had we say in the it says in the comments section that execution policies determine whether each language's code blocks are executed or saved only. And if we scroll down a little bit further to the arguments, it says for the execution policies that, you know, we, we know it's a dictionary mapping of languages to the policies. It says 
true for execution, false for saving only. And because these, uh, if we come back up here, uh, uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS are set to false, that's why it didn't actually execute them, even though it didn't fail when executed. Um, it didn't do anything for me. Okay, and that's it for the updates. A couple, it wasn't, they weren't as big in total as in scope, having a lot of updates, but I think a couple of them opened up uh, newer possibilities, right? Especially having the front end code that it can generate and save and in the future execute for us. So for you, try to have um, set a message to where it can. Uh, create multiple HTML files and add routing to each one of them from like the home page and have it try to maybe stylize and bring in bootstrap maybe to see if it'll stylize it that way. And then, you know, you can add in some more JavaScript just to see if it works for you. So join my discord for a community that is, you know, growing, getting there, sign up for my newsletter, which will be in the description. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave them down in the section below. Or if you have any ideas for um, what they can maybe do for updates, or if something didn't work for you, please let me know and I'll see if I can help. Here's some more videos for you to watch. In the meantime, I will see you next video.